B, Hot Sauce Guitar Kitchen. Installing tuners. Installing tuners if they're too short and your neck is too wide. Problem. What I'm talking about is see how wide this right here is. This is your standard sort of go to your hardware store, get that, you know, what is that? One and a half by some junk. What is this? Yeah, like one and a half by, what is that? Five eighths? Five eighths, one and a quarter, something like that. Anyways, my point is to see how wide this is. When you're building your cigar box guitars, when you're building a cigar box guitar, these shafts from CB Giddy are awesome because see, look, it's just drill a hole, pop them in, bada bing, bada bow, how you like me now, right? These ones, if you get a good deal on these, or if you got these from CB Giddy, these sweet Terminator skull ones, where this part right here goes down, this part right here is slightly too short. And you'll, you'll understand this more if you were to go in here and start trying to install this. You drill your hole right here, and this guy would stop, this screw would stop, and you would need to, to go down some. So this is the way that I'm personally problem solving it, or dealing with it. Oh, and yo, I can't find my, look, in all this mess right here, just give me a second here, dude, look. In all this mess, I have CB Giddy templates. I normally had in, have them hanging right here. And I just realized I don't have them. I don't know where they're at. I, I, and I'm not really even trying to like stop and zone out and OCD out and start trying to figure out where I have them. They're here somewhere, but I have no idea. So I'm using, oh well, look who it is. Captain Hallam, Mad Murdoch. Is my skunk yet? Dude, he found the skunk. I think he found the skunk hole beneath the shed back there. And he's like, starting to dig it up all right focus so I just used this template from the catfish from Mike Orr's book the handmade music factory look I'm all over the place dude look boom so I use this put him down mark my holes and then this is how I'm dealing with this so essentially remember you can use these ones no biggie, use them, fire them up. Basically, find, use a template or however you're going to mark your holes, mark your holes, and then two Forstner bits. Number one, this one is a, I don't know, what size is this? This is a five eighths. And why did I use this one? Because of the size of the washer right here. So I knew that this was going to be the widest point in here. So I basically just took this guy right here. Look, boom. And just kind of did this number. And you want this hole to be wider than this one. You know, you see what I'm saying? Kind of common sense, but... Sometimes even, you know, sometimes I'll be drilling all kinds of wrong stuff. So just drill this right here. Boom. And I just winged it, dude. I didn't really, you know, whatever. I didn't, I eyeballed it right here. Now he'll fit in there. And then I was going to use one of these old school drill bits. Wait, where are they at? It'd be like a three eighths. That kind right there. But if I'd use this kind right here in the past and you go into this hole here, it'll dig it up and, and break it and move the hole around. So I just want to thank old man Forstner for this bit right here. So I use this one right here. What did I say? Five eighths. And now I'm gonna go smaller with the three eighths. That's gonna accommodate this shaft right here. How do I know that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Somehow in my meanderings, I found this little temp, this little jewel. Let's see how you guys right through there. Can you see that number? Boom. With the three eighths, just a pumping. Look, look. 
three eighths, ripping it. And colder than coal is, I just got this basic set of Forstner bits to get started. And dude, I might just buy like a million of them now. I might even forsake those drill bits now and just use these. So this is the one I drilled first. And now I'm gonna drill this one right here, three eighths. And I wanna thank uh, uh, William Goodrich for putting an earworm into my, a musical earworm into my head. That there's a band he just sent me from The Truth is Stranger Than Fiction, Will Goodrich. He sent me this band to check out called, I think it's called Trauma Ray. I don't quote me on that, I think it's Trauma Ray. I just listened to it before I started making this video. And there's a hook in one of the songs where the guy goes, anything, I think he's saying anything. It's just going on in my head now, over and over again. Thank you, Will. I'm gonna have that, gonna have that stuck in my head now. Blam, look. So I've pre-drilled those with that 5 eighths. Now I'm just going to go all the way through. So use, all right, you know how to do this. When you're drilling holes, put a piece of wood beneath. I mean, you don't have to. This, the emerald workbench can take it, but I'm trying not to put a gazillion holes in it. Take your El Clampo, clamp this thing down. Something like that. And then come through here like this. And make sure this, this piece of wood doesn't come a swinging. Make sure he's tight. That scare you? It scared me. Look at this, now I got my new handy dandy, super cheap Harbor Freight. I'm kind of psycho nuts about vacuuming these things. All right, it's all the way through. See that one right there? I didn't have the wood all the way beneath it. Watch, watch what happened. See that? These are these are the result of having the wood beneath it, and this is what'll happen if you don't have it. Like I just had it right here on the edge. Like who cares? But I mean, if you if you want to keep it real clean, and but it'll the tuner will cover that. All right, so dig it. matter I'm still not on my a game in this new workshop this using this template with these type of tuners I've just discovered that this guy is too close see that you can't even move him around so don't panic you ask yourself, what's the work around? Find the work around, and that would be this. I want to move this hole up. So what are you going to do? What you're going to do is, you're going to take a deep breath, get you one of these, and just file up a little bit until and then keep checking this slowly slowly all woods are different you're gonna start going like this and then it's gonna like if it's soft wood you're gonna overdo it 
But it's real hard to wood. You don't want to, you know, take your time. Find the balance between your, how sharp your cheap file is and how hard or soft your wood is. And then just move it up a little bit. space in here where if you, if you, you know, didn't take much and it's still kind of hitting but right here and that's fine I don't want to overdo it I just don't want these guys to be all to be all like this you know what I'm saying and they're all straight put this guy right here in let's see this here This is still uh, just the getting it set up phase for the tuners because I haven't fretted this thing yet and I haven't stained it or whatever. All I've done is shaped it. If you want to see how I shape, I mean, let's see how I shape my next. I don't know where on my videos you're going to find them. <laughs> They're back there somewhere. So basically you're going to take this guy right here stick him on here get him straight we're gonna pre-drill these holes these teeny tiny holes this is uh, soft wood so I don't think I'm gonna need to I'm gonna put these little screws in here then when this is all set up and I see it's all nice and right then we're gonna go back and I have an idea about what I'm gonna do with this neck I think I'm going to try to keep it white and I'm gonna try to antique varathane uh, white it by taking like an antique gray and then staining it and then putting an antique white over it but we'll see but that's the tuners do uh bleh. So what did we learn today? Number one, there's lots and lots and lots of different tuners you can use. If you go on eBay or whatever, or to uh, Craigslist or whatever, and you get an opportunity, opportunity to buy a bunch of cool premium tuners on the cheap because someone just has a set of three or whatever, there's all kinds of sizes of them. And there's all kinds of widths. You could actually use different width here. So it's all about finding the workaround. This workaround was just using two Forstner bits, pre-drilling one, and then going all the way through, use a backing on it. If you happen to put them too close together, just play with it. Just take it, you know, go slow and low, and boom, you'll get it done. I need to pull these back off of here at some point and figure out number one, tomorrow or whenever I'm gonna fret this. 
I might do something fun for the fretboard. This is number 77. So I might count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and wood burn a seven here. And then go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the 14th, and burn a seven here, so like 77. I don't know, we'll see. So I'm gonna pull these off, and then I'm gonna figure out if I'm gonna keep it clean and just use some Danish oil for this. Just keep it clean. That's mahogany and maple. And, or if I'm gonna do something funky with it. That's all, so two things also. Oh, I need to put the, uh, what I refer to as the halo. Ah, the halo right here, so you can hang it up. I need to find the screw that I dropped over here. And also I gotta find my, my, my templates for these, dude. I have no idea, I have no idea where they would be in here. Okay, we'll do that later. Let's go find the screw real quick. Bye bye, what tomorrow or the next day? Oh, here's the box. Did you dig it? Keep oil in your lamps, my friends. Watch and pray. Work in progress. Ha <laughs> ha.